You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. So Brian Kelly, after practice on Wednesday, was asked for an update on the punting situation. I realize that's not the super sexy topic everybody wants to talk about. But amid all of the issues that LSU's had in special teams the last two seasons, one very consistent part of special teams the last two seasons has been Jay Bramblett. We gave the stat out last week. Do you know how many punts were returned against LSU a year ago? Was it was it seven? Was that it? I just blanked. Was it seven or two? I can't. I remember. think it might have been two. I think two was my guess, and you said it was more than two. It was seven. Oh, I know it was seven, but it was like for negative yardage. Yeah, it was like negative one yard returning against. I think it was two for negative one yards. I whatever. Point is, you were actually really good punting the ball the last two years. And Peyton Todd was inconsistent in spring. You go get Blake Oxendorf, who was all conference last year at Louisiana Tech. And they've continued to be inconsistent from everything we've seen. And when Brian Kelly was asked about it on Wednesday, he kind of validated that. I think we've got two guys that I think complement each other. And I think they both can help us. Uh, we just need to find out in what realm. They're both extremely talented. They both have big legs. I think the one that that stands out to me right now is we need to get consistency because we'll see a couple of incredibly big kicks and then we'll see one that that is is certainly not effective enough. So we'll, we'll let those guys continue to challenge each other. But I think it's going to sort itself out. If we got to play them both, we'll play them both. Last year, LSU's opponents returned two punts for negative one yard. LSU returned seven punts last year. That's where, that's where the seven was. I know we had the seven second. LSU's opponents last year returned two punts for negative one yards against Jay Bramblett last year. That's incredible. So yes, yes, it matters. And Brian Kelly's saying we might play them both because they can't decide on one right now. That's not a great spot to be. Hopefully in the next two weeks, somebody among those two figure it out. Uh, it was also um, two other players that Brian Kelly talked about on Wednesday that I thought was interesting. One was John Emery. Because this was an interesting situation where Emery, of course, it felt like it exhausted had exhausted all of his eligibility. But somewhere along the way, LSU was able to get a waiver to get John Emery another year of eligibility. And even though he had left and looked like he was going to UCLA, boom, it pops up and he's coming back to LSU. Well, Brian Kelly was asked how that all transpired, and he gave a, a pretty detailed answer today. Well, there was a bit of uncertainty, you know, with Trey Holly's situation, which opened up the opportunity at that position. I think that that was one thing. I think the other was that he graduated and, you know, we kind of put a mandate on that, you know, he had to do the work academically. And I think the third thing was that he really did an incredible job rehabbing from the injury. Like he was very committed to playing again. And so when we added all that up, you know, and Frank and I talked about it, I said, look, we've got a kid here that a lot of things didn't go his way. Some of it was self-inflicted, but he's really shown that he wants to do this one more time. So, you know, we sat down, we thought about it, and we offered him the opportunity. And uh, he had other off offers out there, and he felt like this was the best opportunity, and we're glad he's back. I've said it many times. I'm pulling for John Emery. Um, I... I want it to go well for him. I don't know what his role will be on this team, probably similar to what it's been previously to where maybe he's a you know, six, eight touch per game guy, maybe four carries, a couple of catches, something like that. Um, but that's a guy that could have left at any point, y'all. That's a guy that was a five star, that it would have, after the academic stuff, it would have been so easy to leave. Not just a tra transfer, go pro. I mean, of course, you had the COVID year. 
Then in 21, he suspended for the whole season. After that year, he could have gone pro. He could have said, forget school, I'm going pro. Came back for 22, worked in Brian Kelly's offense, could have left after that year, came back for 23. Still had the academic issues, finally got across the finish line and graduated, tore his ACL, could have left. Now he's back again. Like, it's a tremendous lesson in perseverance. So John is an easy guy to pull for considering all those things. He's coming off an ACL. I, I don't know what his role is in this offense, but I want him to have success because he's a guy amid an era of college football where guys leave, they transfer. There's all the questions about commitment and dedication. I, and I, I don't judge anybody. Do you what's best for you. But John Emery has battled through a lot of adversity, and I want to see him do well. Hope he has stays healthy and has an awesome career. So Brian Kelly shed some light there. And one more uh, on Kamori and Pimpton. I thought this was interesting because especially now that Mac Markway is gone, because you've got Mason Taylor, who is a... Mason Taylor! Who is a prototype tight end. Who's built into, who's grown into his body. He's 255 pounds now. Inline blocker, athletic pass catcher. Got all of it. Checks all the boxes. And then Pimpton last year was just a pterodactyl. I just wanted to get out wide and catch passes. And with Mac Markway leaving, you don't really have a great inline blocking tight end after Mason Taylor. Mason Taylor! So it was interesting hearing Brian Kelly uh, kind of glow about Kamora and Pimpton today. He's just becoming more mature, and I use that statement relative to maturity. Maturity within the game of football and picking up his assignments. Look, playing tight end, you got to do dirty jobs. And there was a question as to whether he wanted to do the dirty jobs. At times, it seemed as though he was he was going to be happy just being spread out, and that's not the case. He really understands the importance of getting in there, putting his face on guys, blocking, and so that's a maturity, right? That's an understanding of the position and what it takes to get on the field. One of the highlights from practice on a. Uh... On Tuesday was a corner ball thrown in the corner of the end zone to Kamori and Pimpton over Jawan Johnson came up with a big catch. That's going to be a big part of it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.